Welcome everybody back to Boost Motion, guys. And today I'm going to talk about the top dislikes of my Mercedes C63. But before I get into the video, let me do some house cleaning. Guys, if you are new to this channel for the C63 or for my Q50, Q60 content, please subscribe, hit the bell notification, and always hit the like button, guys. If you have a thousand views, I should have a thousand likes. Guys, it's something free that you can do to show your love for the Boost Motion family. Anyways, so people are looking to purchase this car in the future. And I've had the car for about three to four months and I've always been a JDM type of guy. So I wanna talk about some of the things that I like and dislike about this car, but this is gonna be a dislike video. Check for my like video on my channel. Anyways, so because this is a dislike video, I'ma just jump right into it. The number one thing that I dislike about the exterior part of this car is the rear fenders over here compared to like the say the bmws or even the audis they'll usually make the rear fenders stick out from the body of the car they do not do this for the c-class and or for the e-class and up it seems like the amg models they don't really care to do to make the rear fenders look wide unless they're the coupes now they do make the front arches of the front fender stick out which is pretty dope and it gives it a nice aggressive look on the front end right there but they do not give it to the back now i'm gonna go to the second thing now i'm a wheel and tire guy i like to usually upgrade my wheels and tires with this car i haven't decided yet i did add um 15 millimeter spacers to the front and back to have the wheels stick out a little bit more flush with the car but what i also realized is that if you wanted to go with a, a set of aftermarket wheels on this car you can't go with a uh, low offset, uh, excuse me, a low offset wheel. Reason being is, once again, it goes back to the fender, the rear fender of the car. You can't really stick a really wide wheel back there because then it will stick out from the body of the car. So the widest you can really go in the back, I've seen some people put 11s in the back, but it's like an 11 and a 55 offset, which is a super high offset. And that's if you want to squeeze 305s in here because this car is a real wheel drive car. That goes to my third dislike about the car is, well, it's a real wheel drive car. That does suck. Not a lot of people like real wheel drive cars. Not particularly me, but I've always wanted to own one. And this is one of my first uh, real wheel drive cars that I ever thought I would ever be able to get for the channel. So that's actually pretty dope. The third thing I dislike about this car that it didn't have was it didn't have mud flaps. I actually added mud flaps, which I got for pretty cheap. And you can check on that on my channel, but I added mud flaps there and there. Now I had to black it out or add some gloss paint to it so it could look a lot better. But to me, this car needed mud flaps because, because it has such a, a high offset wheel and the rear arches aren't that wide, a lot of the dirt will kick up from the wheel and go into the paint. That's even before I put the spacers on. I did not like that. Same thing for the front. You even got a C300 right there with this without a freaking uh, muff laps. It's super freaking annoying. So you can check that video up there when I made the install video for the, the muff laps. And also I have a video up there, if I already put it up there, with the spacer installed. Now, lastly, what everybody really complains about the most is the fake tips. Now, the tips are dope. I like this says AMG. But it, this is not a real true exhaust or dual mufflers. It's just a muffler in there. And this tip is completely separate from the muffler itself, which is super corny. It is what it is. But at the end of the day, that's just what Mercedes does. And it has some of the best sounding uh, exhaust. Now, let's jump in. Let's get in the car. Because I want to talk about some other things that I dislike about the interior. So, let's get in. All right. So... Now that we're in the car, we're gonna hang out, we're gonna talk a little bit more. There's a lot in here that I wanna talk about. So, for the people that are, I am still new to German cars. I've been around them, so I, I get it, I understand it. But this, I believe they over-engineer a couple things when it comes to these cars. So, the first thing that I'm gonna pick on as a gripe with just the interior and the interior alone um is the push start this is a 2015 model so it didn't come with push start so you have to get this specific device or thing to plug it in because the key is supposed to go in here and this allows me to have a push start 
that's it. It's It literally pops out and pops back in. Super weird, but it's an easy way to change that up. Because it's the first year, so I guess they were just trying to figure themselves out. Now, off of that, now what, 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 I, what the other dislike that I have about this car is the center console. Why is this important, right? Number one, look at it. It has it has a nice design to it. It looks really good. You don't really want to do too much to it, right? But here's the thing. Where do I put my phone? Where do I put my phone? I'm being honest with y'all. I got to go like this or like this or whatever I got to do or put my phone over here or throw it somewhere over here. There's really no way to put my phone. I know you guys see the phone mount. If definitely taking the video, I probably made a short video on this uh, phone mount that I made. But that's a dislike. There's really no way to put my phone mount. There's no place to put your phone. Or at least any decent storage area unless you put it completely out of sight, out of mind, like in there. And you just forget about it. I kind of like my phone out and about, so I had to get a phone mount. But to pick on this a little bit more, why, why, do I, uh, why am I complaining about this? Because this is really isn't usable for me. I think that th this takes away from the look of the car. Like, you want it to look like this. This is what you want it to look like. You don't want it to look like this. I don't know. I just, I just, I hate that look. I hate that it's not secure. So, definitely, see, look, that just popped right out on video. See? That stuff, the stuff is a little annoying to me. I don't know. But that's just my little dislike. But, you know, it's easy to get fixed. You just put a phone here and boom, you're good to go. Or right there. Now, moving forward off of that, yeah, give me my phone, give it to me. Now, let's close that back. We're going to start the car because I want to talk about some things that still deal with the infotainment and stuff like that. So, let's start the car. Boom, car started. So, this has the older, out-of-date infotainment from 2015. So, I'm not going to really pick up pick on the, the, the software for this i'm not gonna really pick on that this is an afterthought like most other crit, uh critics and reviewers talked about that they just slapped up slapped this into place that's not what i'm really upset about what i'm upset about is this thing this thing right here i hate this thing i hate this thing so much the reason why i hate this thing so much is they over engineered it they're making it do too much things at once and let me quickly explain if you press down on this, this is a button. And you see where it is? I press on the button. Let's see if I can back it up. And I go, and it goes into the thing. It's pretty much your enter button. And then you press the back button. Right? Cool. Guess what I can do now? I can go to the circular button, the circular uh, uh, joystick, and press the same thing again. And press back. So it does these functions do the same exact thing. They're pretty much your enter. Now let's say I wanted to swap, uh, swipe left and right. Here's the thing: you can rotate it. See, that's cool. That works, right? Guess what I can also do? Push it. I'm literally just pushing it left and right. So they give you the option of going through your options by rotating it or pushing it left and right. It's super annoying. Like, it, it's like, why? And there's two back buttons. Back button here, back button here. Why? Why do we need that? And also, why are we still here? Because I didn't include this. There's only two cigarette lighters. One cigarette lighter here, right? If you guys like to plug in your um, USB, I mean, your uh, cigarette lighter with a charger, for, so you can have a uh, high uh, fast charging. Or the same thing for the back, too. There's only two cigarette lighters. That's it. And if you want to use, let's say, a USB line, there's no way to run it. So if you put it in there, you can't close this. I really wish they would have designed it that could come through from the side or something. Other automakers do stuff like that. So what I just do is just use the back one and run the line all the way to the front if I need to. That's just something, the way that I get around it. There are other things you can put in here to have fast charging, but I don't want to put a fast charger in here and then close it because I'm just that particular. I don't really want that open. But this stuff is not stuff that some of you guys are going to complain about, but it is an annoyance and it is still a dislike. Um, now, outside of this thing, this contraption, that doesn't make sense. There's this little A thing here. This is um, the auto stop and start, start feature. Whenever you start the car, it's going to automatically go, um, it's automatically going to start in comfort with this set on. 
I don't. I was actually looking through the. I was looking through the settings to see if I could find to turn it off, but I can't find to turn it off. So you have to literally press that and turn that off. So, but the best part is if you put it into sports mode, that doesn't even exist. So you literally have to get in the car and just put it into all their other options, and then boom, you're good to go. Literally good to go. All right. Now, another thing that I noticed about this car is. When you first start it up, no matter what, it always starts in second gear. I don't know if that's because the transmission coolant hasn't warmed all the way up, but let me just show you, show you a quick example, right? Oh, and here's the other part too, because I'm literally showing you, showing you real life. I want to put this car in reverse. I put it in reverse, the parking brake is still on. So I have to hit the parking brake, and now I can go back and not car can go in reverse. Now watch when I put it into drive. It goes into second. I guess that does it because it doesn't have a torque converter. Maybe it's trying to save the first gear from, you know, hurting itself or whatever. Or however they designed it, they designed it this way till it can start in second gear. So when you're literally trying to start moving, sometimes you got to, like, really give the car some gas just to start moving. But outside of that, it just stops right there. It isn't really too much more involved in that. But these are just, once again, these are just some little annoyances that you're going to see. That some of the dislikes I wish that... I didn't have to do in a freaking C63, but that's just the way they designed it. Now, lastly, I don't really have much more annoyances compared to other people, other reviewers that I looked at, looked into and talked to about. Some of them complain about, you know, rattling of the interior. And I, I, I do understand that because if you listen to this, if you hit a bad enough bump, you'll hear that. You know what I'm saying? That you're gonna you're gonna hear a little bit of squeaks and stuff from it's a C class. You're gonna hear it. So I just want you guys to know that does exist in here. It isn't crazy, you know. It is better than my last Nissan Infinities that I had, but that still does exist in here. Um, outside of that, I really don't have much more other than one more thing. I'll say it, sit there and say this one more thing. It is the oil. Now I'm so used to having cars with an oil dipstick. This car has some kind of oil dipstick and the way it's designed is designed like a steel rope and you just stick it in there i don't like it at all it's super annoying and it doesn't really give you the level it just lets you know that there's oil in there so to me it's just an i don't even know what's in there what it's really there for you really can't read it so i dislike that so much about that i freaking hate it i'm not gonna lie i freaking hate it matter of fact let's get out the car let me show you let me show you. Let's do it all in video because I want to be able to give you guys the best review. And I'm just some regular dude from Brooklyn. So we're going to do it right now. All right? Bear with me. All right. Let's go. All on video. I'm going to probably fast, make this a little faster so you guys don't have to see. All right. So this yellow part right here will be your oil dipstick or whatever. It's probably really hot. Take a look. It's basically metal rope, and you pull it all the way out. How am I supposed to read this? I tried to look it up online to see how to read this. I don't know what the high level or the low level is on this car. Literally, I don't know at all. But you do have an electronic... Um, wait, see how I have to put it in? Ah, it's freaking hot too. <laughs> you see, there's an electronic way, but that's only when the oil is actually low. It will, it will let you know... Grab the freaking rag and do it this way. It's annoyance, but I really dislike that because I really would like to check those, check the oil on this car. It will actually be super dope to actually be able to check it manually. But it is what it is. I just that's just the way that they design this car. So I'm gonna bring this video to an end because outside of that, I don't really have any other more annoyances or dislikes with the car. It's rear wheel drive. It's <laughs> It's 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 pretty quick. It's fast. It's gonna do what it has to do regardless. Just little things that are just super annoying about it that, to me, aren't really deal breakers. But that's for people who may be coming into the C63 community and just might want to know a little bit more and see why it's doing what it does and why would it be such an annoyance to them. Those are the things that I find personally that I dislike about the car, but I can live with them. There's nothing that's gonna make me sit there and get pissed off and say I don't want to deal with y'all. It is 
what it is. But outside of that, guys, um, I just wanted to make this video. It's probably a little too long. It wasn't all the best quality. But I appreciate you guys for watching. That may be looking into getting the C63. And honestly, I gave you guys a real honest review of a early a t early model 2015 C63. So you're really not going to get really much of this because everybody wants to look nice and stuff. I'm keeping it 100. I'm keeping it a stack. But outside of that, guys, if you want to contact me, contact me at Boost Emotion on IG, Facebook, and Boost Emotion at gmail.com. Outside of that, guys, you have a good morning, good afternoon, good night. Thank you, guys. I appreciate it. You have a good day. Thank you, everybody, for watching. Do appreciate you guys. Love you guys very much. You can also check out the two links I posted for some of my other videos. Also, on top of that, if you want to purchase some Boost Emotion merch, definitely check the link that I posted also. And finally, if you've been watching all my videos and you enjoy them, please hit the link for to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thank you. Thank you.